welcome to the show, where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Today on the show, we have Cullen Ruff. He is a radiologist, and he wrote the Kevin MD article, Think You Have an Iodine Allergy? You May Run and Reconsider. And he's the author of the book, Looking Within, Understanding Ourselves Through Human Imaging. Cullen, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Kevin. So we'll get into your article and book in a little bit, but first off, can you share your story and your journey to where you are today? Sure. I am a radiologist. I'm in a private practice outside of Washington, D.C. in Northern Virginia, and also an adjunct position as a um, associate professor with the Virginia Commonwealth University uh, School. We have medical students at our hospital, and so we're involved in teaching them as well. Excellent. So we're talking the second week of December, and we're on a cusp of another wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, from a radiology standpoint, what are some uh, radiological findings that, that you're seeing that could teach us primary care clinicians to look out for when we're ordering a chest x-ray, for instance? There are, uh, we've seen plenty, as most people have uh, nationwide, unfortunately. Um, there is a typical pattern that a lot of the people with the COVID-19 pneumonia do have, which is this sort of streaky, hazy infiltrate on the chest radiograph. One thing that I have also noticed, I don't know if it's been put in print so much, but we've noticed this is that when people have comparisons, and it's always a great idea to compare to old studies, the lung volumes do not seem quite so inflated uh, when the people are sick, uh, when they have comparisons that were taken previously when they were healthier. So for whatever reason, some of these people can't seem to just take a breath. And then of course, the CT scans that are prevalent on the uh, web show that same type of ground glass hazy uh, pneumonia. Are there any specific radiologic findings that could portend a, a bad prognostic indicator going forward? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, when we see CT, uh, first of all, there are other complications. As you know, um, people have increased uh, thrombosis and we've seen pulmonary emboli, uh, strokes, different complications, but we are seeing people who get chronic lung scarring. It almost looks like the people with UIP or idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, it's, it's obviously different, but it's quite rapid in its onset. I mean, within a couple months after the initial pneumonia, some of these people have really bad looking lungs as if they may need a transplant someday. All right, so let's transition now to your Kevin MD article. Think you have an iodine allergy? You may want to reconsider. Now, for those who haven't read that article, can you just walk my audience through it and maybe share the story of why you decided to write it? Absolutely. I found that there tends to be a lot of misunderstanding and I hear the same questions over and over again from different care providers, students, uh, doctors in the emergency room when patients have a little bit of an ambiguous allergy history. And here's what I mean. People can, of course, a small percentage of people can be allergic to the iodine-based contrast that we inject for CT and other x-ray studies. And that contrast is very useful because it will show everything from help us detect tumors to blood clots, active bleeding. So there are a lot of studies where you want to give it depending on the situation. Some people can be allergic to it, but the, the iodine-based contrast, it's a drug class. There are different kinds. Uh, the analogy I, I mentioned in the article was if somebody's allergic to penicillin, you would put that they're allergic to penicillin in their records. You would never say that the person is allergic to antibiotics. Mm. It would definitely never occur to you to say, well, even though carbon is not really what they're allergic to, it's a component of penicillin. Why don't we just say that they're allergic to carbon? That sounds crazy. And yet, unfortunately, that is exactly what has happened with the IV contrast. Iodine itself is a mineral that we all need to live. It's part of our thyroid hormone that regulates cellular metabolism, and no one by definition can be allergic to that. In fact, it's so important that we all have it that it's put into our salt supply so that we don't have iodine deficiency goiters that were more common decades ago. Iodine, therefore, can't be an allergen. It is a component of the different contrast agents, but that's not what people are actually allergic to, the iodine itself. The problem comes when you use iodine as a slang and formal term because people use it to mean at least three different and unrelated possible allergens. People can be allergic to iodine-based soap, which is totally unrelated to contrast. And for some reason, I've never quite 
understood. Some people use the term iodine allergy to refer to shellfish. Uh, most food allergies are, are protein allergies, uh, whether it be dairy or peanuts, or in the case of shellfish, there's a, a muscle protein called tropomyosin that's believed to be the, the allergen. All of these are unrelated. So people can have an allergy to shellfish that has nothing to do with IV contrast. And yet when people use this informal term iodine to refer to any of that, there's a lot of confusion. And so sometimes people will not get the study that they need, or they may get a steroid prep to pre-medicate and lower their um, likelihood of having a reaction, which takes time to give when maybe they don't need to have that at all. One of the things that you wrote in your article is that people are very hesitant to remove allergies once they're permanently embedded in a medical record. Now, let's say you had a patient that was supposed to have some type of contrast study and you saw that they had an, an allergy to, to iodine. Now, what, what's normally your next step in terms of investigating whether this is a true allergy or not? Well, I, I'll gladly answer that. And, but you, you've reminded me that if there's anybody listening who's involved in the structure of medical records or electronics specifically, I would ask that you please remove the word iodine as an option under the allergy selections. It makes no more sense to say that someone's allergic to iodine than it does to say they're allergic to oxygen or carbon. And it really shouldn't be a choice. Um, if someone has that from a prior entry, then future visits could allow for a drop down selection of what's actually accurate, whether it be iodine based soap or is it shellfish or is it a contrast agent? And the most important thing to know is what's the specific agent they were allergic to. So how do I go about that? I first just start asking the questions. And if you determine that someone did indeed have an injection of an iodine based iodinated contrast and they had an allergic reaction, you try to find out one, do they know the name and a study that I submitted uh, or presented at an, a meeting uh, this fall, the, the paper is still under review. So I won't go into too much of the specifics, but the study that we did found that almost no patients with a bona fide allergy to an iodine-based contrast can tell you what they're allergic to. They don't know the name. There's a miscommunication or, or a lack of communication between the technologists and the patient and the radiologist and then the um, physicians taking care of them. If you know when the reaction occurred, if it was before 1985 for sure, or before the early 1990s, it was probably the old stuff that is not typically used anymore. Because again, iodine-based contrast is not a single agent, it's a class of drugs. And there were older agents that were more allergenic than the stuff we use now. But once somebody gets that in their head that they're allergic to that stuff that they inject, you're right, it's people are reticent to remove an allergy from the record. And so you have to ask these questions and then try to get the information as best as you can. Now, people do have true contrast-related allergies when they come to radio radiologic studies, is that correct? Absolutely, there are people who have genuine uh, allergies. Most of the time, it's, it's mild. They may have a rash or hives. Some people can get into trouble with breathing, um, and uh, uncommonly, but seriously, people can have an anaphylactoid reaction. So it is a serious thing, and that's why it's important for people to know what they're allergic to. And I try to encourage people to make sure, patients, to make sure that they understand, to know this by name. People used to carry cards around in their wallets. Now people can actually put this on our smartphones so that some, if someone finds this down uh, without knowing the password to the phone, you can just swipe and find whom to call in the event of an emergency and a brief medical history the person has entered onto their phone. It's a really smart thing for people to do. Um, but just like it's important for when somebody presents, it's important for us to know certain things more than others. Like we really wanna know what medication somebody takes, if they've had cancer, if they've had surgery, and you wanna know what somebody can't take, i.e. what they're allergic to. So yes, it is a, a potential allergy, but there are a lot of people who think they're allergic or who might think they might be allergic when they're really not. Now, it's been a while since I studied this, but can you briefly outline the, the basic contrast materials that are currently being used? Oh, I think there are other people who are more qualified than I am for that, but I'll give you the basics. So if you're talking about x-ray studies or CT, which actually uses x-ray, um, but of course in a different technology, it's iodine-based, uh, it's uh, intravenous, it's injected. That's different than say, if you're having an MRI which is a gadolinium-based. That's another um, point of confusion that if 
people happen to have an allergy to that, and that's even less common, those are unrelated as well. And you mentioned there are pre-medication protocols if we have to give contrast and then there's a supposed allergy to the contrast. Can you just outline typically what the protocol is if we had to do that? Yes. Um, some of the best references, one of them is the American College of Radiology Manual on Contrast Media. It's available online and there are plenty of other articles online. But what we typically do is we give several doses of prednisone or prednisone equivalent steroids uh, as well as Benadryl uh, so many hours in advance uh, to diminish the likelihood of having a reaction. But the issue uh, with knowing what you're allergic to is this. If you know the specific drug, it's actually more effective to just get a different contrast agent than what you had before. And it makes sense, right? If somebody's allergic to penicillin again as an antibiotic and you need another antibiotic in the future, what would you rather do? Would you rather take penicillin with steroids to diminish the likelihood of a reaction? Or would you rather just take a different antibiotic that you're probably less likely to react to? And that would be what we would do in radiology in an ideal world. If we knew what people were allergic to by name, then we could select a different agent. Sure. So if I'm a patient that I've always thought I had a iodine allergy, or if I'm a primary care physician and I saw iodine allergy in the allergy sections of the EMR, What's your bottom line advice? What's, what's the next thing that, that we should do if we're in that situation? The first question I have is what does that mean to you? Mm -hmm. Because again, the term iodine allergy is nonsensical and it means different things to different people. So I would ask them, have you ever had a contrast injection? If they say, no, I've never had that. Well, then you automatically know that they're not definitely allergic to contrast at all. So then you find out, was it a topical iodine soap? Was it shellfish or some food allergy that's totally unrelated. And then you just try to get down uh, to the specifics. If they've had a contrast reaction, then you ask, well, what were the symptoms? Patients are good at remembering what symptoms they had if they had a, a reaction. They're not as good as, as our study that's still under review found. They're not as good at remembering where they had the test done or when it was done, which limits the ability to look up records and to determine if it was an older or a newer agent. So if a patient had a reaction to, say, just topical iodine or iodine soap, they're okay to proceed with the contrast? Yes, that's unrelated. Okay, great. So we're talking to Cullen Ruff. He is a radiologist, and he wrote the Kevin MD article, Think You Have an Iodine Allergy? You May Want to Reconsider. Cullen, you're also the author of the book, Looking Within, Understanding Ourselves Through Human Imaging. Can you briefly share with my audience uh, a little bit about your book? Gladly. And I was, I want to thank you again. You uh, on Kevin MD allowed uh, me to have one of my first excerpts, a short chapter um, posted after the book released earlier this year. There have been some wonderful books written by a lot of different physician authors, but to my knowledge, there had not been one looking at the human perspective by way of looking into our bodies. And so I wanted to just share some stories that I had accumulated over the years of patients who had had an imaging study where some discovery was made and it really may have changed their life or may have just opened everyone's eyes to the wonders and the mystery of our bodies and of life in general by way of looking inside of ourselves. And can you share a particularly poignant anecdote from the book? Oh, there are so many. Um, I've got trauma. I've got tumors and stroke, of course, but not everything is, is ominous. Um, one is the story about a woman who had simply never been imaged before. She had an ultrasound that thought her spleen was enlarged and they had trouble finding her gallbladder. And so they recommended a CT scan as a workup. And it turns out she had a normal sized set of spleens, more than one, but they were on the right side, not the left. What they thought was her enlarged spleen was her liver on the left side, not the right. And they couldn't find her gallbladder because they didn't know where to look for it. It was also on the left side, not the right, where it's typically seen. And she simply did not know, having made it into her 30s, that she had what's called situs inversus, where she had a, a mirror image of sorts of her anatomy development. And I thought it was just an interesting opportunity for us to all realize that we're all different. Um, there's this mind, body, spirit connection that we all try to understand as we go through life, because we need our bodies to, to live the lives we, we live. And yet our 
our personalities and our essence is not necessarily related to uh, our body. And um, I, so I don't mean to get too, too esoteric because it's not an overtly uh, spiritual book, but it's, there are things that we can all reflect on and just learn from other people's experiences. I've got stories of what it's like to have diagnosed child abuse for the first time and other forms of domestic abuse, um, drug abuse, criminal activity. There are a lot of different types of stories in there. And what has the response to your book been? It's been good so far. Now, I don't expect this to be the next Da Vinci Code, but um, it has um, been doing well, especially for a book that unfortunately got uh, launched right as the pandemic shutdown set in. So the live events that I was planning on doing all got canceled, except for the very first two. Uh, and then everything screeched to a grinding halt. But fortunately, it's been well received. And currently, the ebook, the Kindle version, is a, an Amazon bestseller right now. So I'm very pleased for the support that I've gotten. Great. And best wishes with that. Now, my final question, Colin, what's your take home message that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience? Let's get back to the subject of this contrast allergy. Remember, the most important thing, know your allergies by name. Call them by name. Um, don't use slang terms like iodine, which mean different things to different people and really are, are nonsensical. And if you can't determine what people are allergic to, just dig a little deeper, try to get the old records and try to use the proper terminology going forward to prevent these, these areas of confusion from happening and persisting. Well, thank you so much for sharing your time and insight. And thanks again for being on the show. It was my pleasure. Thank you for having me.